Hello everyone and welcome to your July 12th update from the 50th annual World Series of Poker. It's day seven of the main event and in the lives of the remaining 32 players, this is undoubtedly one of, if not the most critical day of their poker career so far. But before we delve too deeply into who is left, we must cover who is not. Many people were speculating at the start of play yesterday, with just more than 100 players left, that Antonio Esfandiari was a favorite. If nothing else, he was a crowd favorite for sure. But he was out very early, which still left a handful of notables. Jake Schindler managed to stay under the radar. He is pretty notorious for not doing interviews or other media, so that could very well be why, but he finished 67th. Chris Hunichen, a.k.a. Big Hooney, was on the feature table for most of the day, but ultimately busted out in 54th. Alex Foxen came in short stack but managed to eke out pay jump after pay jump and ultimately succumb in 40th place, which had him walking away with a substantial payday of at about 212k. No doubt the hand of the day resulted in the elimination of Sam Greenwood by day five chip leader Timothy Sue. When the big blind Sam Greenwood three bet his cutoff open, Sue made a reasonable call with 10-9 suited. Now that much everyone would understand. After flopping an open-ended straight draw, Sue continued to play it standard with a call. When the board paired on the turn, that's when things went a little bit off script. Shoving over Greenwood's bet, after the high stakes legend called it off with aces up, it created the pot that would swing the tournament one way or the other. More than 80% of the time, one of the world's finest No Limit Hold'em players would have the chip lead and north of 100 big blinds in the biggest tournament on the planet. The other 20% or so, a little known software developer with just a few thousand in catches, would rocket above the rest of the competition and eliminate, arguably, the most skilled player remaining. As fate would have it, the latter scenario unfolded. Sue made his straight on the river, leaving shocked onlookers, both live and online, a buzz about the massive inflection point in the tournament. It seemed likely that Sue would end the day as the day six chip leader, but it's actually returning third in chips after Nicholas Marchington, who's playing his very first ever main event at the tender age of 21, and Hussein Ensan, who has a pretty impressive resume, including an EPT title and more than 2.67 million in tournament winnings. Dario San Martino is ninth in chips coming into the day. There's one Brazilian left in the field, which in my experience always leads to a boisterous and rowdy rail. Yuri Zivielewski, who already captured one bracelet this summer, he'll be looking to capture the granddaddy of them all. Many in the media and players alike will be rooting for a longtime member of the poker industry, Gary Gates. I don't know how much action he sold or traded, but if I had to guess, I would say that many of my closest personal friends will have their summer saved by the deep run of Gary Gates. Good luck, my friend. I feel relaxed, I feel comfortable, it's, I'm just, at this point I'm just enjoying the ride, it's just, it's been a lot of fun. I think everybody who plays poker, works in poker, watches poker, they dream of making a deep run in the main and I couldn't ask for anything more than this, it's, it's awesome. Now looking at some of the interesting facts from this year's main event, the option to enter before day two was newly introduced this year. Three players that made it to the top 35 did exactly that. Now the main event, while all eyes are on it, is not the only event going on today. The little one for one drop returned today with five players and there are just three left eyeing the top prize of 690K. Have a look at where the players stand. Another tournament is scheduled to finish yesterday but that won't crown a champion until today is the $1,500 PLO Bounty. There are five players left, including bracelet winner Bryce Yaki. Six players remain in the 3K at no limit with David Gonzalez up top and a very capable Patrick Leonard coming in fifth in chips. The $1,500 mix no limit hold'em pot limit Omaha is also in its final day today, but unlike the previously mentioned tournaments, there is still some significant play left in this event. 47 players remain of the 1,250 that entered on day one. Five players in the field will be looking to capture another bracelet to add to their collection, including Ankush Mandavia, David ODB Baker, and Ayaz Mahmoud. In case that wasn't enough bracelet action for you in one day, the $1,500 bracelet winners only event will also dish out another bracelet to a prior bracelet winner. There are eight players left of the 185 that entered. Have a look at how the final table stacks up. 
It's day two of the 100K high roller, and there are 49 of poker's best looking to capture one of the most prestigious bracelets of the summer. Continuing an absolutely insane summer, Brandon Adams is once again leading the charge with nearly five times his starting stack. Some other big names among the leaders include Byron Kaverman, Mikita Badziakowski, Ali Msirovich, and Bryn Kenny. After a total of 99 entries, the payouts were just confirmed, and the last player standing will walk away with nearly $2.8 million and, of course, the bragging rights of the poker elite. For those looking to make their summer profitable that don't have a piece of any of the remaining players in the main event, the closer starts today. This $1,500 event last year saw Joe Cotta take his fifth place main event bust out and turn it into bracelet number four. The Brasilia is filling up today and we have all the action for you on this tournament and everything else from the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino right here on PokerNews.com.